It's Monday, and we're on Melrose Mountain. It's uh, afternoon. I've been a little late getting around to the uh, devotion for today. Uh, I've really been thinking a great deal over the last couple of hours uh, about all of the things that are on television, about money, uh, about the government shutdown, uh, about entitlements. And I decided the next three devotions I want to do are on money and uh, the total lack of, the love of, and entitlements. I think uh, I want to stay away from the politics of what's going on, uh, but I think I want to address what the Bible says uh, about finances and about money, and perhaps as they may relate to what's going on in the world today. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 6 through 10, uh, there's a scripture passage that uh, is quite meaningful. It says, Godliness is a means of great gain when it's accompanied by contentment. For we have brought nothing into this world, so we cannot take anything out of it either. If we have food and clothing, with these we should be content. But those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a snare, and many foolish and harmful desires which plunge men into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all sorts of evil, and some by longing for it have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. When Lois and I first got married, uh, we didn't have much. Uh, we bought an FHA house, uh, $350 down. Uh, the payments on the house were $65 a month, principal interest, and uh, included all. It was only a two-bedroom, one-bath house, but that's all we really needed. It was just the two of us. We had a lot of hamburger helper, not because we were poor, but because we wanted to live within our means and progress into a nicer home and nicer automobiles and have nicer things. I don't think there's anything wrong with anyone wanting to get ahead in this world, but I have a real problem when somebody tells me that they can make more money on disability or more money on welfare than they can by working. I've always been told by my father that it was the right thing to do to work hard, harder than the next guy, and then expect that you would work your way up so that you had nice things. I think that's what America has been founded on. Not conniving and cheating and not these phony pyramids and not all kinds of get rich quick schemes, uh, but hard work, being a good worker and thinking through. Now, I know there are a lot of people who seem to have a lot of money and some of them manage those funds very, very well. And as a result, I think God gives them even more. And some people have very little money they don't manage those very well. And as a result, I don't think God gives them much more. But I want you to focus in on the passage of Scripture today. Uh, that when we have a contentment, and that doesn't, a contentment doesn't mean that we're satisfied to not try to get anything more. But it means that we're content with what we have for today. It doesn't mean we can't try for more tomorrow. That if we have a love of money, that it becomes a snare. It becomes the root of evil. It becomes a temptation for us. Today, as we think about all that's going on in this world, the stock market's only concerned with what this particular situation in our government does to stocks because they love money. They love what it brings. Bosses want to hire people for as little as possible so they can stay competitive and have good salaries themselves. Employees would like to be paid far more than perhaps their jobs are worth because they want more, not because what they do is worth more. Isn't it interesting how the love of money can create all kinds of problems? Bosses taking advantage of employees, employees taking advantage of bosses, 
the stock market taking advantage of every situation that comes along. The rich get richer and the poor get poorer. It brings us to the fact that many of those that think that the current medical program, which seems to be at the heart of all of this, is going to suddenly take away all of our problems and take care of all of our finances. If I understand the programs as they're offered today, most of them have high deductibles and have a cap as to how much they'll pay out. I remember when I first started to work, uh, I was more interested in somebody taking care of catastrophic problems, if we should have them, and that I was willing to pay for my typical run-of-the-mill medical expenses. And therefore, I bought insurance that took care of catastrophic costs. I know it's really terrible when somebody can't get insurance because they have a pre-existing condition. Somehow we have to figure a way to take care of those people because they have catastrophic medical costs already and yet nobody seems to be willing to take care of their needs. On the other hand, I have a real problem with those that want every little sneeze and sniffle to be taken care of by somebody else and they're not willing to work to earn the insurance that they need for routine medical. Well, I guess that gets back to 1 Timothy 6.6. 6. The love of money is the root of all sorts of evil. And longing to have money, we wander away from the true faith and we're pierced with many griefs. I'm not wealthy and I'm not poor, but I have learned to become content with what I have. I don't have a desire to answer all of these ads that say that I can get rich quick by spending some of my time on the internet or by trying to sell somebody else into selling products for me. I don't have any desire to get rich quick or to take what wealth I have and roll it into even greater wealth. I've learned to become content with what we have. We have our basic needs met and way beyond that. But I don't think that the love of money has grabbed hold of my soul. Having Jesus, knowing I have eternal life, knowing that I can influence others to know Jesus and to have eternal life and to help them to find the balance of life, not loving money, nor being satisfied to not earn more, but try to improve themselves so they can. Hope you'll think about the love of money. I hope it's not something that's deterring you, and I hope it's not something that's causing you to demand more and more. Someone sent me an email recently, and uh, I know I've already run over time, but somebody sent me an email recently and said, teach a man how to fish and he'll eat for a lifetime. Give a man somebody else's fish and he'll vote for you. I think we've become that kind of country. I think we vote for candidates based on what they do for us financially rather than what's best for the country and what's best for us individually according to scriptures. We ought to be worth our wages. Nobody ought to deny that. But we got to be careful about our demands for entitlements. God bless you and have a good day.